It's Conduit News Radio with Paul Harrell. Folks, I want to introduce you to Rabbi Ari Spiro. Uh, he's on the line. Rabbi Spiro, thanks so much for coming on this morning. Hey, good morning to you. Absolutely. I uh, just want to remind everybody, you are the author of a book called Pushback, Reclaiming Our American Judeo-Christian Spirit. Tell us first a little bit about that book. Well, it's mainly addressing the need for a national identity, and America has one. Unlike other countries that just happened to uh, evolve, and basically they were surrounding the idea of a particular race, the United States was founded on particular ideas, and those ideas all emanate from the Judeo-Christian ethos. Now, that doesn't mean about a person going to church or synagogue twice a week or or, or sitting around and, and praying all day. We're talking about a certain civic ethos that if you look in the Old and New Testament together, you'll see that there's a message there, which is liberty, individual responsibility, and accountability. The idea of judging a person based not on the group or the tribe he comes from, but as an individual. And then, of course, morality, knowing the difference between right and wrong, and also local control, that the people decide for themselves in just about 99% of the cases, as opposed to a king or a powerful government somewhere deciding for them. And that's been our formula for success and prosperity, fair play. And that's what we have to know is our identity. If you lose your identity as a family, a company, or a country, then you lose your formula for success. Wow. I, I would agree with that. That is a very, very well said. Um, I'm curious, uh, Rabbi Spiro, what are your thoughts on, I mean, I was reading one of your latest articles. Um, I was uh, reading it over at CNS News. And uh, you mentioned back on the 8th, uh, after President Trump had his press conference, um, he was criticized because, of course, he said that he was a nationalist. They're trying to say he's a white nationalist or a white supremacist, but he clearly defines what that means. And it just means that he wants to make sure that America, you know, gets the best deal possible. What are your thoughts on this concept of nationalism in, in America today? Well, nationalism, especially if you're an American, is a good thing. If you believe America is a good country, and I do, then why wouldn't you be a nationalist? And if you believe in the American people, which I do, why wouldn't you want them to be placed first, America first? It, when it comes to uh, jobs, a president should make a decision based on what would be best for the American people. You know, it was just so obvious to me during the times of the Clintons and uh, Democrat leadership, and even the Bushes, that there was a certain feeling that the United States worker, well, he can be sacrificed for this greater goal of making sure that all the countries in the world have jobs. So what we'll do is we'll allow many of our jobs, we'll trade them away here in America so that things can be produced in Pakistan or Indonesia or, or, or the or Mexico, China, and they they forgot about the American workers. So I think nationalism is a wonderful thing. Those people that are against nationalism, I really don't think they're that patriotic. It sort of like reminds me of um, Michelle Obama. When her husband won as president, she said, now I like America for the first time. Said, well, that's not nationalism. That basically is saying she doesn't like the country, but now that she's in power and she's getting all of these goodies, that she likes the country. So I think the president loves the, the country, the American people, and that's why he's a nationalist. And those that criticize him, I don't think that they love the country. They, they only love it when they're in charge, when they have that power. They love their power. And the last thing i just like to say is that when you accuse people who love the country of being white nationalists, then you're basically, you're really exposing your bigotry. You're basically saying that the American people are... Nazis. That's a bigotry. I love America. I'm a nationalist. I'm not a Nazi. My next door neighbor who loves America, I don't consider him a Nazi. So those that make that charge, 
I think they're bigoted against the American people. Yeah, you make a great point, and I, I would always, uh, I always try to remind people that you know this country is not a bigoted country. Generally, we elected uh, Barack Hussein Obama to president not once but twice. We did it the first time. Bro, uh, I'm sorry, my microphone seems to be malfunctioning here. We did it the first time, uh, uh, seven years after. Uh, you know, uh, Muslim terrorists to knock down our buildings. I mean, what kind of country would do something like that if they were bigoted with with a middle name like Hussein? You know what I mean? I mean that that's that to me is incredible. Nobody gives the you know America any credit at all, at all for that. Um, we're talking with Rabbi Ari Spiro, a national political analyst. He's an author. You mentioned patriotism uh, a couple days ago, Veterans Day over in France. The French president uh, Emmanuel Mar. Macron, uh, he seemed to think that nationalism is treason, he said. He said nationalism is not patriotism. What, were, what was your reaction to that, Rabbi Spiro? Well, if you're a globalist, if you're a socialist, and you don't believe in borders, you don't believe in sovereign nations, then you're, if that's your idea of patriotism, then of course you're against nationalism. But those of us that believe in sovereign nations, independent nations, Nations with borders, with a distinct identity, certain distinct goals, nationalism is wonderful. But the Europeans, they, they don't think like we do. They're basically, they're socialists. They have a thing called the EU, which Macron is very much in favor of. And the EU basically says that all those countries in Europe, well, they dissolve their identity. They even dissolve the idea of borders. You know, once one of these Islamists or these jihadists get in, one European country, then all of the European countries, they are in danger because there are no borders. That's the deal. Once you're in one European country, you can freely go over to the next. And so uh, all of Europe is in danger once a jihadist passes into one of the European countries. So they are not nationalists. Uh, so he's redefined patriotism to mean basically internationalism or transnationalism something just above nationalism. So this is, this is a very European thing. And um, also, I think it's a matter of appeasement. He now has a Muslim population there, what, six, six seven, eight percent? And uh, he can't control it. It's out of control. And so basically, he's no longer fighting for an, a, a specific national identity. He's giving in and saying, well, whatever this new population uh, brings to the table, and how that determines the future of France. Well, that's it. That's all fine because nationalism and national identity isn't good. I, I think it's an act of appeasement to this uh, tremendous Islamic immigration that he no longer can control. Well, you know, uh, he also went on to say, Rabbi Spiro, that, uh, you know, we don't need to resurrect the demons of old, specifically with World War One, the mechanized slaughter of so many, uh, so many people fighting that war, and that... Basically, he was saying that Trump saying that he's a nationalist is potentially resurrecting those demons. Then a couple of days later, the French president says that it'd be a good idea to have a European army. And then the chancellor of Germany backs him up and says, yeah, that's a fantastic idea. And I just think to myself, wait, didn't he just say that we don't uh, we don't need to resurrect these demons of the past? It kind of seems a little hypocritical to me. Well, sure, because the main purpose was to humiliate President Trump. And he feels free. Macron, Macron feels free to do that because you have all these powerful left-wing people in this country that want the president to be humiliated. See, I think that if Macron thought that by humiliating the president, after all, what Macron did was terrible. The president was a guest in France. And if you were a host, you don't spotlight and then try to embarrass your guests. So I thought that was very crude on the part of Macron. But he was able to do it because he knows that in this country, if it's Nancy Pelosi or it's the Clintons or it's the Obamas, they're cheering him on to humiliate the president. They want to do anything they can to weaken and destroy the president. So I think that uh, he was able to do that because he knows that many of the powers to be in America want him to embarrass the president. So, of course, it ends up to be hypocritical, but that wasn't the purpose, was not to be consistent. It was to humiliate Trump. Wow. 
Yeah, it is. Uh, it's one thing after another. You know, they they definitely uh, are are out to uh, out to get him. What what did you think, Rabbi Spiro, about the midterm elections? Obviously, we really don't have a final result on 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 Florida yet. Um, but what did you think about the midterm elections uh, generally? What does that mean for America, in your opinion? Well, in terms of not having final results, when the Republican loses, then the result is immediately accepted. If the Democrat loses, then we have the situation where, no, the election isn't over. We're still counting and counting and counting forever. Uh, so I, I, I just wish the Republicans wouldn't be such uh, – naive people they're so eager they're so eager all the time to say okay we lost like with norm coleman okay we lost uh we're the democrats <laughs> they do this time and time again if they lost no 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 they didn't lose the election isn't over not until we make sure that we have enough votes to declare victory uh, what did i think about it listen it was much better than it could have been in a, in a certain way like president trump says it was historic victory we did gain more in the senate but we did lose the House, and I understand that historically um, you're going to lose the House in the midterm election, but it doesn't make me feel good to have, have mm. lost the House. And uh, I just, uh, what bothered me is with, with the country seeing what these Democrats have done, and yet they don't apprehend it. So many don't apprehend it, and they vote for a Democrat candidate. And that bothers me. Don't they see after Kavanaugh and other issues, uh, the Democrats are so many of them. You, they're proposing socialism. And do, do you think it was a win? Do you think it was a win for the media? I, I think it was the media showing that yeah, we can still be effective if we completely uh, trash Trump the entire time and lie about what he's actually doing, and lie about Republicans and conservatives and evangelicals and Christians. And, yeah, lie about it all the time. Listen, it's always been a win for the media almost my entire life, and I'm not young. Uh, it's always a win. It's people like you and I who follow politics, and it's not politics. It's a serious thing. This isn't just politics. This is about a philosophy. We know what's going on, but there are so many people who don't follow politics, so they only decide based on what the media tells them, and that's dangerous because we have a left-wing media, and also we have a whole segment of immigrants that are coming here that don't know of our founding principles and they don't believe in our founding principles they're going to vote for whoever gives them more freebies you're exactly right I, I really appreciate it. it's been a pleasure meeting you rabbi ari spiro author of the book pushback reclaiming our american judeo-christian spirit i'd love to have you on again soon sometime rabbi oh certainly all right well you have a great uh, you have a great rest of the week okay Hey, you too. All right. Bye-bye. Rabbi Ari Spiro, everybody.